everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Tuesday, January 14th. Markets uh, in the red across the board. Dow Jones down 179, NASDAQ down 61 points, S&P down 23, and a Russell down 16. And that's uh, due to Atlanta Fed President Dennis Lockard uh, basically said that he would still support for the tapering this year. Uh, and that led to, um, believe it or not, uh, investors shedding risk and uh, selling selling good stocks, quality stocks, and bad stocks right across the board. Everything was down yesterday. And then we had another comment from um, Goldman Sachs. Uh, that also put a negative tone into uh, the trading day yesterday. So we had a lot of pressure. Uh, stocks are, did sell off. I do think that this is actually a healthy uh, for the for the markets, not just to continually grind higher. But uh, one day doesn't make a trend. Uh, a lot of emails. Oh, you know, is it the top? Should we be short? You you know, we don't know yet. It's only one day, so we need to really. Today's going to be a real important day today. And. Uh, why? Well, we did get that candle, that red, red engulfing distribution candle. Now we need to see if we get some follow through. If we take out yesterday's low on a closing basis, then I would say uh, more than likely you're, you're going to have a tradable top in place. And then we would just need to evaluate what type of, um, of a pullback are we going to get. Now, yesterday da uh, the S&Ps were down 1%, not a big deal. But um, you have all the pundits on CNBC, Fox Business News. Oh, you know, uh, now, now are we starting to correct here? Is this, uh, uh, or should we be nervous? And, you know, don't listen to what the uh, pundits say on TV. They have no idea what's going on in the markets. And what you should be looking at is um, your portfolio, managing your risk properly, and uh, wanting to see if, you know, do you think that if you feel that the markets are, in fact, just pulling back gradually? And and uh, from all the indicators I looked at in the, in the volume, it definitely was market distribution day, but there was really no panic selling. Once we uh, reversed uh, and those comments were made around 10, 1030, markets just sold off and really didn't give a bounce. They just kind of push lower and push lower and push lower pretty much all day. So it's one of two things. If you were a trader and you're looking to get short, either you just close your eyes and get short, which is not the good thing to do, or you would wait for some sort of retracement rally to an extension or some sort of a resistance area and then look to short and manage it properly because your stops would be above that area. That really didn't do, um, um, I really didn't do much yesterday because of the fact is uh, that type of um, retracement we really never had. I mean, we've had a couple of small little uh, bounces, but in days like that, if you're uncomfortable, it's, it's okay to stand aside. It really is because the fact that if the markets are too volatile uh, and then you're going to look to put a smaller stop, well, that's not going to happen. The more volatility, you need to put wider stops and then just reduce your share size, you know? So anyway, um, I want to get right to the uh, indicators. Got a lot of stuff to show you tonight. But either way, today's going to be a pivotal day. Uh, we want to see if this market is going to hold. If the market does hold, that does not mean that we still can't get a bounce and then fail again. So uh, markets right now are up uh, $1.25, really going nowhere. So it's something that um, tells me that there is additional pressure. And, and, and market participants are, I would imagine, a little bit nervous. So um, just let's, let's take this one day at a time. But again... Um, I'd like to see the markets hold here and then see we get a little bit of a bounce uh, and then fail. And then that would be a really a better sell signal or a better sell entry for that matter um, to get into the markets. Okay. Now, we got the bullish percent, uh, which I mentioned that we did get a sell signal. Right? It tried it and it didn't. And now we're totally separated. So this, again, gave us another good buy signal, another sell signal. Again, another sell signal, which actually was kind of whippy from in here. But you could see this is actually a very good indicator for a buy, a sell, um, you know, risk on, risk off type thing. So this actually did well and, again, is on a sell signal. And now it's separated. So um, this is going to take a lot to move this thing back up again. All right. Let's take a look at the new highs, new lows. And shockingly, this actually went down. So which tells me more of the indexes took the grunt of the selling. Okay, we want to see the new highs, uh, New York stocks and new highs. If they really start to sell off, this should really be spiking like it, like here, like that one day. Well, now it's not. So, again, a good, a good um, indication that stocks really didn't uh, sell off too, too much. Now, obviously, they all sold off. A lot of stocks were in the red. I mean, I, everything I saw yesterday was all red, but didn't make new lows. Okay, so that's that's actually a decent uh, decent thing to take a look at. Let's take a look at um, the dollar. Dollar actually sold off again yesterday, down 15 cents. No big deal. Um, surprisingly, when the markets uh, have risk off, the dollar should be rising. That did not happen again because of that um, 
uh, a dismal jobless claim number at 74,000. We are expecting over 220. So uh, the dollar is pricing in now um, what is the effects of that non-farm payroll report. So dollar didn't do anything, which tells me that we should be looking at commodities. And I mentioned gold. Um, we did break the 50-day moving average. Now, there's a spot here. This is going to go both ways. And, and I'm – this is – I still gold is still in a downtrend, and I, if gold can get back up in here and then start to sell off and start to roll and give us a sell signal, because gold has some resistance at these areas here, G and, it's, and as well as the GLD, which I'll show you in the chart segment. But um, I would prefer, if if I was going to be if I was going to be a seller of gold, to get up into this area and then fail and get a and get a sell entry. But right now, gold broke its bearish symmetry, as you can see here, and now kind of breaking back up and what's it doing if you look at it, if you look closely here's your left shoulder here's your head and here's that little that bull flag here that other right shoulder creating uh, if you take this area here a little slanted neckline and inverted head and shoulders on a daily chart so gold is now creating a bullish pattern which I'll mark this up for tomorrow um, so I would not really sell gold at this area if you want to take a shot at selling gold here but I don't think that's going to be a good trade at least for the moment um, Right now, especially when you have that risk off or you have a little bit of uncertainty, especially with that uh, dismal jobless number, gold um, may rally again. So that's why I'm staying. I'm staying away from gold, but I'm a better, I'm a better buyer of silver. Okay, why? Look at the chart. Much cleaner. Basing, basing all of December into January, broke above the 50-day moving average yesterday, and now is ready for a breakout. And I can see, you can easily see a touch of the um, of the 200-day moving average of 2173. Okay, uh, I like silver much better. Seasonality, gold and silver do very well January and February, more silver than gold, okay? So keep an eye on that. Um, and another reason why we like to look at, uh, let's take a look at USL. Now, this is its own animal. And here I have the, the uh, plotted the uh, bullish percent energy, which is right up in here. And as you can see, this is separating from the eight. So this is actually setting up for a better long trade. I would not be looking to buy USO at the moment, no wedge short oil, but I think we can get a flush back down to the 31 area, 32 area, and then base. I like to see this bullish percent come back down to the 35, 40 percentile, and that would entice me a little bit more to be looking for an entry in um, USO. Now, another one, uh, another trader had mentioned, hey, take a look at corn, which corn is the ETF um, that uh, is the uh, tracking for actually corn. And I've traded this many of times uh, in the past, and this actually looks like it's setting up really well. Uh, we had a big, big, big uh, um, buy candle here, a big engulfing candle with a lot of volume behind it, you can see. And now yesterday, uh, corn actually just literally hit that 50-day moving average. Now, if this can come up and then back test it, you want to buy that next pullback with that higher low from this low. Obviously, your stops would be below here. And then uh, you wait for that pullback. So let's wait for another push higher, see if the market can pull back. And then once that happens and back test this downtrend line, that's going to be a buy entry. But I do like corn going forward in the next couple of weeks. And this actually is a mover. Uh, this does trade. So uh, uh, maybe you might want to look to buy some, buy some calls. Uh, low volatility, so you can actually go directional on this one. Okay, and let's take a look at the VIX. VIX exploded from the lows here, and that's what's been doing, right? We had this big move up. Big move up, big move up, and as soon as we get down to this area, now we didn't break below the Bollinger Bands, but um, it did move much higher uh, on, obviously, on uh, on Monday because of that sell-off. I always think, I, I, even though we get that sell-off, and we do get that sell-off, eventually VIX will uh, also be a great uh, shorting opportunity. Uh, usually volatility does collapse right after that. Uh, initial purge of, of um, selling. So anyway, let's take a look at the VIX. We, that might even be a trade down the road as well. All right, and um, palladium. All right, speaking of those metals, uh, palladium holding up very well. If we can take out this high here, that's seven uh, 750, then I think uh, we can get a good run for uh, for testing of this uh, this higher area here at 77, 70, 80. So um, really good palladium holding up well, which tells me that's why the silver trade I like so much, um, uh, better than gold actually, is uh, is this little spot here. When palladium starts to move, they're all going to start moving. Okay. All right, so let's go into the chart segment. And we have, just want to show you again, as you can see, we're at extensions, monthly extensions from the 2009 lows of 666. 
and we have met this target. Now, that little spot here is the monthly chart, so we were actually you know, early into the month, so that's why you don't see too much. But again, we're at these extensions, and that's when you should be uh, a little bit nervous and tightening up stops, and uh, depending uh, depending on, on, on the way you trade. I mean, uh, you, if you're looking for good quality setups that you want to add positions to and add into pullbacks, you know, knowing exactly how many shares you want to buy, that's fine. But, um, you know, if I wouldn't be adding any longs um, at these areas here. Now, we did get a massive distribution day, as you can see. Uh, we did break below the 20 day. Now, what I'm seeing is that if we need to get below, if we get below this low of 1808, then I think you're going to have a real shot. And let me just grab that. There we go. Um, 1800 is going to be your next play here. As you can see, it, it, co it coincides real nice from this low to this low, this low, and then this would be the spot here. A break below that, you're going to see that you're going to see that 1780, 1790ish area, and I'll show that to you. Uh, on the uh, hourly chart here and here we go so you're gonna get that little spot 1800 will be a spot right up in here 1797 1800 that's my next next target if we in fact break yesterday's low and if we do then um, you can actually really get down to 1767 1770 here uh, that could be the next break if we do break that 1800 area so plenty of room to the downside and the markets would still be bullish so Nothing wrong with, uh, you know, some profit taking. I mean, that's for sure. And what I'd like to do now is I, I really, I would like to have the market rally a little bit and then fail at these upper areas of 18, 19, 18, 20 ish area of this first area of support, which is now resistance, and then look for some short setups. All right. That's the best way to get short the market. Not when the market's just, uh, if you're not short already from here, you could see we, we really didn't get any sell off. At any given time, this market could have actually turned and, and, um, and actually reverse and you would have been stopped out of your short that's not the real way to be short the short way the right way to get short is have the markets roll have the markets flag into some sort of resistance and moving average on a shorter term time frame and then look for a sell trigger to get short that didn't give it to us so you can easily blindly and recklessly just get short by just oh I'm gonna get short the market but that's not what trading is about right it's about probability so just make sure you keep that in mind because yeah while it might have worked yesterday but, um, you know, the, the amount of times you do it, you would get stopped out more than you would make money. All right. Now let's go into the uh, chart segment. Just want to show you. Now the problem here is what I see is that most of our indexes, right, the five index that we follow that I show you every day, have now broken that 20-day moving average. Now if the market does sell off, it doesn't matter good or bad stocks. All stocks are more than likely most of the stocks are going to sell off. So that means that you're going to have to hold through some pain or... Um, look to get out and then uh, look for another re-entry on those stocks. But broke the 20-day moving average, not good. Um, usually when you get an engulfing candle like this, though, you usually get some sort of retracement rally, 50% of the engulfing candle. So let's see what happens today if we do get that. If we get back above the 20-day, uh, then I actually do think we have a shot for uh, at least a rally back up to the upper end of the resistance on a shorter-term time frame. Okay, let me just get this out of the way. All right, so now we have... Um, same thing here with the diamonds, you can see, broke the 20-day moving average. We have uh, pressure building here in the Bollinger Bands. We're still elevated, so again, you know, if we break the 20 and break today, yesterday's low, we could easily trade down to the 160 area, which is the 50-day moving average. Okay, uh, transports actually did very well holding up. Now, actually, transports <laughs> literally ticked higher and I think made new highs before it clearly reversed and sold off. Now, obviously, we had a big move on the transports the last three days, so that's that's why it is way above the 20-day moving average. But again, it is a good sign that it, this is our leader right here. The transportation sector is our leader. If transports are moving higher, more than likely most stocks, uh, most of the indices and stocks will follow as well. But um, we want to see some symmetry in a lot of the other indexes, uh, some of the other leaders picking up the steam, uh, picking up some momentum too. Um, like the transports, transports obviously the uh, Russell, and then of course the uh, tech sector, which would be the Qs. Okay, here's the IWMs. Now this actually held up, uh, and I'm surprised. This broke, but actually closed at the 20-day moving average. So this is going to need to stay and hold, and see if we can get back above it. Now again, if if we get a big reversal today with volume, then I would say, hey, you know, uh, we could still have a nice good shot to the upside. Uh, but if, if we're just sluggish and we close up 20, 30 points in the Dow, uh, even let's say flat to up 15 or 20, that's not a good sign that uh, buyers are not willing to step up back to the plate here. So we've got to use caution here in the next couple of days. Q's, 
sold off pretty hard. Apple actually sold off hard, so that's another reason why. Okay, let's take a look at GLD. And as you can see here, we're at these areas where um, I would like to, I, it would, would interest me of getting short. We have this nice big area of demand uh, right here, of, um, excuse me, of supply. And then now we just want to see if it breaks. If it breaks and then starts to sell back off again, that's going to be definitely a cue to look to get short gold. Now, go, if it does break out and then pulls back and makes a higher low from this low, then uh, I think all bets are off for a while on, um, on gold. Okay. Now, we do like that silver trade, so just keep that in mind. All right. Now, I wanted to show you that XLE I showed you on Thursday. I started showing you this chart getting into the sector charts now um, we did break this right so now we want to see okay so mark we have a bearish rising wedge we close below it which actually now initiates a, a sell trigger right a sell signal excuse me uh, what would we do from here well what I want to see is like one day doesn't make a trend for me I want to see another day break back below it and then maybe a possible retracement sort of creating something like this something like um, a small maybe bear flag okay and this is just you know hypothetical right now because that hasn't happened but if we can get a little bear flag pattern and let it retrace really really low not another day down to here and then kind of back test that and then fail out of the bear flag that's what I'm looking for and that's what I'm looking for to get short and I will be looking for stocks in this ETF Right, the top 10 holdings, which we all know ExxonMobil is one of them, and see where that goes and look for to dial down um, and look for maybe some shorts in this sector, uh, in this ETF. Okay, But right now, hypothetical, that's what I'm looking for really to get short this. I always like to be a breakout and then, uh, and then a back test for more of a swing trade. So the first initial breakdown would be more of a day trade. So I'll be stalking this one today as well. Okay, uh, USO. Like we mentioned before, right, we'd rather be better buyers down here at these areas because right now this is telling me nothing that we want to look to get long um, oil, okay? Uh, and with the bullish percent I showed you, it has a little bit more ways to go before um, I'm interested in getting long USO. Now, the home builders took it on the chin yesterday, but that's fine. If you are legging into this trade, you know how many share sizes, how many shares you're going to have, and you would leg in small so that when it does pull back and makes that still makes that higher low from this low, you have a nice average price. That's why we don't always you don't always want to get in with big size, and then now you're stuck, and now you have to hold it and wait it out, and hopefully that um, you know this more the, the the stock goes up, and we don't we're not in the hoping game here. So um, same thing with Lenar, pull back still above the 20, looking good. I think the home builders and the banks are going to be a great trade setup in 2014. Um, here is uh, Pulte Homes, as you can see, pulled back as well, holding above the 20-day moving average. KBH really doing nice. I mean, I, I really like this chart a lot, and I would love, uh, I want to see where this market goes, but I'll tell you, if, if we get a little bit more of a sell-off, I'd be looking to buy into this area, into this um, uh, uh, symmetrical triangle, if you will, down below, and start averaging into this trade. This one here is giving you an opportunity to get long. Um, XLF, as you can see, big, big down, down day, sell off. But again, held the 20 day moving average. And you'll see the banks took it on the chin too. But this is, look, Citibank's a great opportunity to start looking to get long. Now, you, you don't want to just catch a fall on knife. You want to wait and see and then let it produce a reversal candle, dial down to a shorter term time frame, look for a buy entry. And that's going to be a spot to get long Citibank. And that's one of the stocks that I'll be stalking in the coming days. JP Morgan here, another, another nice little move lower. Let's see if it can move back to the 50 day moving average and into this area here, that'll be a good opportunity to look to get long J.P. Morgan again. A lot of that bad news is out, too, by the way. Uh, Goldman Sachs, same thing here. Uh, but I like Goldman back more to the 50-day moving average. And lastly is Apple. As you can see, Apple held up well. So Apple's coming into a buy area here. So if Apple can... Uh, can uh, um, actually, I'd love to see Apple kind of just sell off right hard into the 520 area and then look for a buy trigger. All right, guys, long video. Apologize, but I just wanted to get uh, a lot of key points across. Let's see what happens today. Very important to see this market actually start to reverse and not take out yesterday's low. That will be the pivotal low that we will be looking for, and the markets would probably give us a continued a move to the downside. Now, if we can get back up, and um, reverse today, then it's just going to be a sit and wait game to see if this market does move higher and take out that um, that big engulfing red candle, or um, does the market uh, trade within an inside day from yesterday? So those are the key points I'll be looking at. Have a great day. We'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care.